What up, son? What up? Grind and pivot Louis Max on a cold New York Thursday afternoon. But I have someone that's going to warm us up. You have no idea. <laughs> Straight out of the West Coast. And you know what? She might be my favorite mink or minx, I should say. But, you know, I'm going to go back and say that she's no doubt to me and anybody I say about this will know what I'm talking about. She's the Kay Parker of this mm. generation. And maybe we'll get into that and explain. Mm. Today I have the beautiful, the insatiable Mindy Mink. How you doing, baby? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you, Lily, for such a nice introduction. Hmm. <laughs> My Appreciate pleasure. It. Good to see you. You look amazing. How are you feeling? You're doing okay? Yeah, everything's good. I mean, gosh, it's almost the end of the year. It's been a wild, fun, amazing year. Um, so yeah, it couldn't, couldn't be better. Great. So let's start from kind of the beginning. Give our the people listening and viewing just a little bit of uh, what led you down the path that you are, are are walking, running, jogging down? Right. That's that's a good question. Uh, well, uh, I was a single mom and living paycheck to paycheck, barely getting by. Um, and then all of a sudden, one day, my full-time job was pretty much gone. It went to a part-time job. And I knew that I had a mortgage to pay in a couple of weeks. And I needed to do something quick where I could make some money quick. Uh, my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, um, he had always said that when he was first with me intimately, that he was a big um, porn watcher when he was um, in a previous relationship. And he just said, I think you would be amazing in front of the camera. I think the camera will love you. And so when I was in this position where I needed to pay my mortgage. I was like, what can I do? And, and so I looked into being a webcam model and I thought, well, I'll give it a try and see what happens. And you know, the rest is history. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Wow. So you were totally open to it. Were you taken aback? I mean, what was the, no, reaction? I actually, I actually have always been a very sexual being. And so for me, it was like, well, this, I mean, I'm, I, I feel like I'm, I've always been really good at flirting and teasing and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, well, I'll just, you know, do what I do, you know, and see how it goes. But no, I wasn't offended at all. I mean, I actually kind of took it as a compliment. And I thought, and at that time I was um, 43 years old. So I was kind of like, well, you know, I don't know how many people are going to want to watch a 43 year old, but heck, I'll give it a try. And boy, was I surprised oh, how many people wanted to watch a 43 year old. <laughs> Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's interesting. So that's a great question. Um, that leads me to that answer leads me to a great question. Where, what, what did you do from tw 20 to 40? What were you doing? I mean, t tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, waitressing mostly, uh, was a waitress. And uh, then I got into like uh, sales, uh, inside sales, and then I was an outside sales rep for various um, construction, landscape construction related companies, um, you know, so I was basically out and about, you know, doing my thing. And, um, you know, I, I love people, I love to connect. And so for me, sales was, you know, well, waitressing too, you know, was really good too. It was just, so I've always done something where I'm like surrounded by a lot of people and meeting new people all the time. And it just, yeah. So that's what I've always done, you know, waitressing or, or sales. That's very cool. Um, point, point of note, I was a waiter for 10 years in the eighties and I met my wife as a customer still married oh. 38 years. Very cool. How about that? So, so you guys, uh, how about that? So I, yeah. I, I totally know the waiter and the waitress, is, by the way, a lot of fun yeah oh yeah 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 i mean i always had a lot of fun with it and right you know made good money you know so to speak Great you Great know money. and yeah absolutely yeah. always on the west coast is that where you're from you're from out yes. west yep i was born in burbank california but then by the time i was in second grade we were in northern california 
at that point and, you know, stayed there my whole life until basically coming here to Arizona. Gotcha. So what's a typical day in the life of Mindy <laughs> Mink? You know, I think people might want to know, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, honestly, the first thing I do when I wake up, um, cause I wake up kind of early is I put on an audio book. Um, and it's usually a book that is an inspiring book of some sort. Um, one of my favorite authors and speakers is Dr. Wayne Dyer. And so I listen to him and, you know, just kind of get my mindset in the right frame, uh, to start my day and then come out, make my coffee. I love my coffee in the morning, grind the beans, the whole thing and uh, have a little bit of coffee. And then I start answering messages on OnlyFans and loyal fans. Like that's the first thing I basically do. Um, and then from there it's, um, you know, workout, power walk. I have a stationary bike. I teach Zumba. So do some kind of exercise and shower, get ready. And then because of how active I am, on OnlyFans and loyal fans, I'm always getting requests to making custom videos or doing a, a Skype video chat. And so then I'm doing those things, you know, um, and it's pretty much then the rest of the day or night, I'm still answering messages. There's always a ton of messages, <laughs> you know, and I answer all my messages and um, everything. So it takes up a lot of my time, but, but that's what I, that's the typical day for, so, for me. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yes. that was cool about the audio book. That was pretty interesting. I like that. I know you're pretty spiritual. What's it like now? Do you get in? Do you get? Um, do you get noticed? Do you do people check you when you not noticed, but what what's the word? Um, recognized. I'm losing my mind. Uh, you you know, get recognized out there, like if if Mindy's in Starbucks or <laughs> you know, like I mean, do you get? Do, does anybody, uh, you know, say? Wait a minute. I know you. You know, if you would have asked me that a year ago, I would have said, no, N no, I've never had anybody come up and recognize me. But something happened a year ago. I don't know how it happened. But the first time was literally here in my own hometown. I was at a UPS store returning something from Amazon or whatever. And I'm just standing in line. It was a long line. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm answering messages, <laughs> you know, waiting my turn. And this gentleman walks by and he says, Mindy. And I mean, my heart stopped and I looked at him and I went, I went, and I just put my head back down. And I just went back to answering messages because I was so caught off guard, you know? And then, you know, he left and I, I really kind of felt bad because I was like, I've always said, if you write, if you see me and you recognize me, come say, say hello. hi. Of course, say hello. Absolutely. Right. But because I was so caught off guard, I just, I just <laughs> denied it and put my head down. And then after I did my whole thing with the package, I ran out in the parking lot. I was like looking, you know, cause I wanted to go like, say, I'm so sorry, but you know, it wasn't like I could have a conversation with them in line. There's a bunch of people, right? You know, if you know what I mean? So I was like, it probably would have been bad if I would have said, yeah, hi, you know, but um, I could, I didn't see him. And I thought, well, he is in my backyard and maybe I'll run into him again. And, and then, um, so that was probably like, oh, maybe eight, nine months ago. And then I was in Vegas um, in February this year for my best friend's daughter's bachelorette party. And we were just out walking around in a group, you know, there's like eight, eight or 10 of us. And these two guys walk up and they're like, can I get a picture with you? And I was like, sure. And I said, and I said, is there a particular reason why you want a picture with me? Or do you want one with the whole group? No, just you. And I was like, ah, and I said, you must know who I am. And they're like, <laughs> You know, they were totally, I was cool. Like, they were totally yeah. cool, though. They were totally cool, which is totally cool. That's, very cool. That, respectful. that's gotta be the best. That's gotta be the best. Yeah, totally respectful. And then the other wild one was while I was on that same trip, we were at um the restaurant called Dick's, you know, where they like they like the waiters and waitresses like treat you horrible and all this. Anyways, the waitress, they make you these you, know, you wear these like tall hats and they write something on the hat, 
you know, like a derogatory thing. And it said free motorboats on my hat, right? And so I thought that was pretty funny. So I looked at the waitress and I was like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. And then as I was like looking at her, she just went, she's like, oh my God, you're Mindy Mink. And I was like, yes, you know, and it was a girl, you know? So I was like, oh my God, that's so exciting. And um, so, yeah, I don't know. All of a sudden it just kind of started happening this year where people recognize me. I mean, I'm pretty much homebound. I don't really go out a lot. But uh, but it has happened and it's kind of cool. I have to admit. Cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely good. I'm glad you admitted that it's cool. Absolutely, it is cool. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, if people see me, please come up and say hi. I would I would be happy to say hello and have a little conversation with them for That's sure. That's great. It's excellent. Yeah. How'd you come up with the name? Good question. Um, yep, yeah, a lot a lot of good questions. Uh, so my husband. Um, when I first met him, he said that the first thing that attracted him about, you know, about me was my hair and down there, downstairs, I had just kind of a little patch and he had said to me, um, wow, I'd really love to see your pussy hair grow out. And I said, oh, okay, sure. You know, so I let it grow, let it grow. And as it got to what it is now, he, the first time he was like, like really like, <laughs> because he's kind of a connoisseur of Bush. Um, he was just like petting it. And shout out that. to, shout out to Mr. Mink. Right. Mr. Mink knows. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he was like touching it and looking at it. He's like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful pussy hair I've ever seen. He said, it's as soft as a mink. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. So two years later, when I start webcamming and I need to come up with a stage name, he said, your last name has to be Mink. And I was like, okay. And then I just felt Mindy kind of flowed with Mink. So it was really him that inspired me for my, my stage name. That's amazing. Good. Yeah. Good. Great. Kudos to him. Let me tell you. <laughs> incredible. So uh do you think do you ever think about what the effect of you doing this kind of content uh will have on you in the next you know 10 years just let's say just for i'm sure it yeah. goes through your mind i'm sure it goes through your mind as liberal as you might be yeah uh you know i i don't really worry about it anymore because Back in the day in like 2014, because I started all this October of 2012. So in, in 14, I was told by some people in the industry, uh, just so you're aware, at some point your family will probably find out. And I was like, nah, they'll never find out. Well, my family found out in 2016. Um, now I do have a, a, a child and I was honest with him from the get go, like two months after webcaming, I was honest with him because I really didn't want that was my main thing was how he was going to handle all this, you know? Um, but he has been so supportive and awesome. And when I started filming girl, girl porn and became a porn star, he was like, so proud of me and just like, just, yeah, he was, he's, he's got my back. So anyway, so I, I don't really worry about that anymore. Um, or think about it because everybody in my family already knows now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Any any mentors in the in, in the uh, in the adult world now? Anybody that you've kind yeah. of uh, latched you know, onto and been become maybe friends or 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 oh friends? Yes, yes. But I never had a mentor really. And to be honest, I didn't even watch really porn before getting into it. I was not a porn watcher. I would occasionally watch a little bit of lesbian porn here and there, but it wasn't something that I that I did. Um, so I never really had a mentor or looked up to somebody like, Oh, I would really like to, you know, talk to this person and have them mentor me. But, but I, yes, I did create some, you know, friendships with a few of the ladies, the one I'm most active with, there's only two that I really have stayed in contact with um, because I stopped filming for production companies in 2018. So I do everything on my own now, but the two ladies that I have stayed in contact with are um, Siren Demir, who I did work with, did some custom videos with and some production work with, and also Eva Long. 
again, production work as well as custom videos. Um, so those are the only two ladies that I really like have an ongoing still friendship with. And they're amazing. I love them both. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's talk about the actual, you know, filming a little bit. Um, only fans, loyal fans, your content. It's a, it's a business. We know that, but you look super, you know, super sincere, uh, during your content, but what, what's going through your mind? How frame out a frame out, out for us and for the people like a behind the scenes kind of thing in a way where you're, uh, putting together a scene, putting together something, what's it actually like? Take us from like maybe the start and, and, and the end, if you could, in, in maybe okay. a brief way. Sure. Um, so 90% of what I film um, is from a paid custom video from a fan. So they have come to me and said, I would like you to create this video for me. Um, and so they've kind of given me already the story and the idea. And then I just elaborate from there, ad lib. And, you know, they might give me a few keywords or sentences, you know, not a script. I don't do scripts, but they might give me a few little things. But basically, I just kind of like take that idea that they've given me and really just try to immerse myself into this role and this idea and this story um, in a way where, you know, it's funny, like, I, I never know until the camera's rolling what I'm actually going to say. Like, I don't plan it out or think it out or act it out and then, and you know, go through it one time and then have my husband film it. Literally, we just, I'm best when the camera just starts rolling. I, I guess I'm blessed in that way because it, it comes naturally for me, you know, to just get into the character and get into the story idea and create it. Excellent. Yeah. I know you, I know you're kind of spiritual. You're very spiritual. We mentioned that before. Um, tell us a little bit more about that and how that keeps you you know, mm -hmm. grounded. Grounded, yeah. Uh, I was blessed and fortunate to um, have a spiritual upbringing at the time when I was like a, a preteen teenager. Um, so it, it just, I was born and raised Catholic because I'm Italian, but it just never really set well with me. But when I was in this preteen age, my family found a, um, a spiritual center that just really spoke to me. And I just have always kind of stayed in that mindset and energy. Um, and I found that, you know, yes, I've had my ups and downs and I've had, you know, some crazy situations in my life where I've gone through some difficult times, but I know that staying because I was introduced to these teachings at a younger age, it's really helped me, you know, overcome, you know, some of those real difficult challenges I've had in my life. Right. So it's an important part and piece to my day. Like every day I read a daily word message from this booklet that I have. It's like every day I am putting myself in, in that energy and space. And I like to meditate and, you know, just, um, and meditation, I, you know, I think a lot of people think, oh, it has to be, you have to sit there and be quiet and your thoughts have to be gone. No, meditation for me can be taking a walk and just being in that moment of looking at the trees and the, hearing the birds and feeling the wind and the sun on my face. Like for me, that's meditation too. It, you know, there's different forms and ways to meditate. So, um, yeah, so it, it is very important to me because I, for me, balance is everything, you know, I need to have balance in my life. And so that's why the spiritual things that I do are important to me. It keeps right. me grounded. It keeps me balanced because obviously I'm in a very interesting, crazy, um, job. <laughs> no doubt about it. Especially that, with all that the stuff done? that I do, if you yeah, know no the doubt. stuff that I do. <laughs> Well said. Now that was, was that a Northern California thing? That spiritual? Yes. Well, and actually uh, the, the, the church organization that I am 
you know, a part of is called Unity. And they're actually based in, I, I, I believe it's Missouri, but they, they have churches all over. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not like it was just a church or spiritual center in Northern California. They're all over the place. They're worldwide, actually. So, so yeah. if I had to ask you, uh, what was the most pivotal moment in your life? You know, where was that mm. fork in the road or where? I know we said for at I know you got into the content at a certain age, but was there some pivotal moment in your life that kind of you had to go one way, you had to go the other that kind of made it made it where you're at now? Yes, actually, um, when I was 28, so my child was um, you know a couple years old at the time, and it was like I just kind of got to that point in my life where I was done worried about what people thought. I was done um, living my life to please other people. And I was going to start living my life and doing things that made me happy. So I divorced my son's dad uh, because I just basically realized that I shouldn't be in that marriage. And um, I decided I was just gonna do me which also meant um, getting into a lesbian relationship. Uh, so shortly after uh, we separated, I had met a lady and I'd been bisexual my entire life. I'd been with women since I was 19 on and off. But, you know, because of the stigma, you know, of being in the lesbian relationship and all that. And, you know, we grow up with the mindset, you're supposed to get married to a man and have a baby and, you know, all that, right? So I just was like, fuck it, you know, I'm gonna do me. And I wanna know what it's like to be in a relationship with a woman. You know, I had already had sex with women multiple times, you know, so I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna do this now. And that's what I did. And it, but, 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 but the cool part was, is like I said, it was just kind of realizing and waking up that I'm not gonna live my life for everybody else. And I'm gonna do what makes me happy, you know? So that was the pivotal moment, I was 28. I love it. What's Mindy Mink's favorite song to sing in the shower? There is no favorite song because I don't sing. Like, that is one thing. I Like, to get me to sing Happy Birthday, like, I have a lot of people on, like, Cameo, ask for a Cameo birthday shout-out or something. I'm like, oh, my God. I do not like to sing. I mean, I sound okay, I guess, but I'm really not a singer. I'm a dancer. So I really don't sing in the shower, so I don't have an answer for that one. <laughs> What's something that... Uh your followers and some of your fans would be surprised to, you know, learn about you in, in an interview like this. I've always been a very shy woman when it comes to sex. Meaning when I met my husband, you know, this is prior to me webcaming, I would only have sex with the lights off and under the covers, like I would not really show my body and it had to be dark. And when I had orgasms, I would cover my face with a pillow because I didn't want anyone to see what I really looked like when I was having an orgasm. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up here, but it's pretty did. heavy. That is pretty yeah. heavy. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's a couch session in itself. Right. Yeah. My mother says that when I was a little girl, I didn't want anyone to see my feet without socks on them. So I was just really shy. I know. That's it's crazy. crazy. What, what a 180. I mean, give me that's that's so ridiculous. That's 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 amazing. But uh, absolutely. That's, I think it's interesting, too, as yeah. as well, because, you know, like we, it's when I asked you that question, you were like, pretty deep thought there you know it kind of that got into your it got it got into your core a little bit yeah i think most people would be i think most people assume because of what i do that i've just always been this person that can be nude and walk around and be filmed and watched and no no i i i was not that way <laughs> I want to say thank you so much to you. I, I, I'm, I'm really, you've been so open, candid, 
and and relaxed during during this time. Tell me what's coming up. What are we looking forward to? I know some good things are coming. Uh, you tell us, and I want you to give some shout outs. Just let us know what's cooking. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, everybody who sees this will get a you know, completely different view of what Mindy Mink is. Although I got to tell you, to be honest, before you answer, um, you came across exactly the way you come across, mm. which is, I think, a really, you know, real down to earth um person so what's cooking up tell me what's happening tell everybody we want to know yeah thank you thank you appreciate the compliment uh, and i do tell my fans that i'm really just a down to earth the woman next door really I, you know and i never thought of myself as oh i want to be a porn star it really wasn't that it was just me falling into it the way i did and just enjoying what I was doing and, and just really being me at the core as much as possible, you know, in, in my work. Um, but anyway, so as far as what I got cooking, uh, well, a couple of things. Yes. Um, on my birthday is in a few days. My birthday is this Sunday, December 4th. I will be 54 years young and very proud of that. Um, so I do, um, you know, have a store, a, a link it's, it's a uh, shop And I have lots of wonderful things on there. I just created that store this year and I'm very, very proud of it, um, for multiple reasons. Um, one is I created my very own lube. Here's the box, the pretty box. It's an all natural lube. And you can get this on my store. Um, and I have these awesome little bottles here. And when you get one, you get my autograph on the bottle. So it's all natural um, because I'm very much into natural products as much as possible. It's silky, it's smooth, it's got just a little hint of um, flavor to it. It's 100% edible. And I have used it in a few of my videos and scenes, um, but I've had a few people um, that have used it already that love it. So you can get this on my store. And then um, I have some other beautiful things on there that I was just too many wonderful things to mention, but it's a great store. And there on that store link, you can send me a birthday tip. Uh, if somebody would like to, you know, celebrate me and thank me for everything or whatever, then uh, a birthday gift is always accepted graciously. So I have some options on there for birthday gifts. Uh, and then um, the other thing is, is on Sunday, because of my birthday, I'm releasing my scene, my Black Label magazine scene with uh, the beautiful and wonderful Serene Siren. Uh, and I'm very excited about this. Um, particular scene that we did together. So I'm releasing that on Sunday, that's coming up. And then, you know, the rest of the year is just kind of status quo next year. I don't really have anything specifically planned, but I, um, I might do another meet and greet. So I had a meet and greet this year in April. I had seven amazing ladies come to my meet and greet. And so I might do that again. I was really surprised no guys came. Like what? What did? Wow! Really? This happen? Yeah. Well, I had one guy who did sign up to come, but he had an appendix rupture like the week before, so he couldn't make it. But so I might offer that again. I really haven't decided for sure on that. But um, but yeah. So those are the things that I have up and coming. And um, you know, I just want to, you know, say thank you so much. You know, to all of my fans. I have I say the best fans of the world, male and female. And I, and I mean that, like, it's because of them that has really um, kept me going for 10 years now. It's been 10 years. And, you know, the love and the support and the praise is why I'm still here doing what I'm doing, you know. And I just, like I said, I have the best fans in the world. And I thank each and every one of them every day. I'm very grateful. And that's another thing I practice every day is my, my gratitude journal. I'm writing in there all the time. I'm thankful about everything, you know, in my life. So I'm, I'm very blessed. 
Sounds great. Right. We want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. I want to say happy birthday coming up. Yeah. Happy and healthy new year. Yes. And uh, we're going to put all the links down below. Okay. Where everybody great. can go, of course. Louis Max Grinder Pivot, a beautiful Mindy Mink. Appreciate it. Peace. Closing doors, please.